Hello and welcome back to WePC. Now when it comes to your gaming arsenal, your PC usually takes precedent. However, that's all well and good, but you can have the best PC in the entire world, but you're not gonna be able to type without a keyboard. Your keyboard is a vital piece of hardware and knowing which keyboard to buy is a vital piece of information. Keyboards nowadays can come in a variety of sizes. They feature different switches and can have extra features such as macro keys and RGB lighting. It can be quite confusing if we're honest. So this guide is going to be your one-stop shop for all the info you need about gaming keyboards and hopefully you can leave this video a keyboard expert and know what your next purchase is going to be. So let's start off with the most simple, the size. When buying a new keyboard, the most important thing you need to know is the form factor. A keyboard's form factor comes in fully sized options, also known as 100% boards. You can also get a TKL, which stands for 10 keyless. TKL keyboards have no keypad and in many cases, no dedicated arrows or function buttons either. Having one of these keyboards definitely makes your setup look a lot cleaner, but it doesn't come without any cons and we will get into that soon. A full size keyboard is commonly the most bought keyboard and it is exactly what it sounds. These keyboards include arrow keys, function keys, and all number keys you would expect to see on a fully sized keyboard. With these boards, you also have extra room for dedicated media controls, and in specific scenarios, macro keys also, for all of you MMO lovers. It is also worth noting that if you're going to get a keyboard, not just for gaming, but also for home office use, you'll most likely want to go and pick a full-size keyboard for those extra keys. This is because TKL keyboards are usually a bit more fiddly when doing things such as editing a Word document. 10 keyless keyboards come in a variety of sizes, including 40%, 60%, and 80%, giving us a nice array of options when creating our perfect setup. 80% keyboards are pretty much identical to a regular keyboard, except it has the number pad keys cut off. If you drop lower to a number such as 65%, then the directional keys will be squashed towards the end in a much different format than you are used to. Whichever board you choose to go with basically just depends on your specific needs. If you are going to use this keyboard, not just for gaming and home office use, then you're probably gonna go for a full size keyboard. But if you have a limited space and you're only going to really use it for gaming, then a TKL keyboard may be perfect for you. Now let's move on to switches. And if you don't know what a switch is, it is the technology that takes place underneath the key. Now there are two main switches. There is mechanical and membrane. The technology between the two is quite dramatically different, but the general rule of form is that mechanical is better. Now mechanical switches come in three forms, linear, clicky, and tactile. They're all considered very good for gaming, with some being better than others. And the main thing is that they all have different characteristics, including feel, actuation and pressure, and responsiveness. Mechanical switches are generally quite loud, so if you're on the hunt for a quieter keyboard, then knowing what switch is right for you is paramount, because you don't want to go and order a specific switch thinking it's gonna be really quiet, and then all of a sudden you are deafening the inside of your office, because we have a few people like that at our work. We don't like them. Now the most common switch that you will see and hear is Cherry MX. Cherry MX is one of the oldest and is considered to be the forefront of the mechanical switch world and has been popular for many, many years. Let's get to the science on the mechanical switches in case you don't know how they work and why they are so good. Now this is quite confusing. So if you're not really into this, this might go straight over your head, but we're gonna try our best to explain this. Mechanical switches utilize a stem and moving contacts, actuating a key press when the current is broken between the metal contacts. However, on a mechanical keyboard, the switch actuates before reaching the bottom, which allows for a much more responsive and more enjoyable and frankly more responsive experience. And frankly, the most appealing benefit of a mechanical keyboard is its responsiveness and just how great it feels to type. Membrane keyboards have always been known as feeling too mushy and not that great to type on for a long period of time. Now switches aside, it's time to move on to another important factor and that is the features that will come with a keyboard when you are purchasing it. Wrist rests are a common feature, for example, that come with the more expensive gaming keyboards. Now this is a feature that you may not have even thought about, but having a wrist rest is actually an incredible feature and it reduces the stress on your wrists. And if you're gonna be typing all day, every day, that's one thing that is eventually going to amount up and you'll start having repeated pains and the wrist rest is there to essentially stop that. Other nice features that come on certain boards are dedicated media keys and macro buttons. Media keys make your life a whole lot easier and you may not have even thought about them before. If you are a frequent user of listening to music whilst you work, then having buttons in the top right of your corner to press pause, press play, adjust volume can be a welcome feature. The same goes for macro keys, especially if you are a editor or even a MMO player, 
Those keys can be a crucial part of your experience as it allows you to do things in a lot easier way. It may be a welcomed idea also to know that on a mechanical keyboard, you can actually switch the keycaps. A lot of keyboards, unless specified otherwise, usually come with ABS keycaps. Now these keycaps are fine, but eventually they will wear out when compared to the other option, which is PBT caps. Custom keycaps are more than just a durability thing though. You can also get some really cool designs in. Some of the keycaps that you can get for ducky keyboards are honestly some of the greatest that I've seen. You could be really creative with this and nobody has to have a boring keyboard. You can make it your own truly. It is important to make sure that it is compatible with your keyboard. Okay, so let's move swiftly on now to the big one, the price. Your budget obviously can dictate the overall quality and feel of your keyboard. So it is a important factor to consider. Obviously, if money is not an issue, then buying the best gaming keyboard that money has to offer is not going to be a problem for you. However, if you are strict on a budget, then trying to find the specific gaming keyboard for you without sacrificing too many features can be somewhat of a difficult process. Gaming keyboards can vary from $200 down to $100, but there is also some fantastic keyboards that range in the $50 price range. The general rule of thumb is the lower price of the keyboard, generally the worse that it is. If you're going to invest a lot of money into a keyboard, you know that what you're gonna get back is excellence. There are many brands out there, and honestly, seeing them all can give you just a little bit of a headache. In our best of guides on our website, we make sure to choose the best quality keyboard for specific brands. If you visit the link in our description, it will take you to the article that this video is based off. On that article, we have listed some of our favorite tried and tested Razer, Corsair and Ducky keyboards to just give you a little more room to do your own research without you having to search for gaming keyboard on Google and be overwhelmed with the sheer amount of keyboards that there are. So all that aside, the number one thing to consider is that a gaming keyboard is in all in all an investment. You really do get what you pay for. If you want to spend $10, $15 on a keyboard, then don't expect the same results as if you are going to get a $200 keyboard. It all comes down to personal preference and we do hope that this guide kind of gave you an informed decision when it comes to you now buying your own gaming keyboard. So are you looking to upgrade your own keyboard? What keyboard do you have now? Let's start a discussion in the comment section down below because it'd be great to see what setups people have. And if you need any questions answered, we'll be down there giving you any assistance all day, whenever you need it. If you enjoyed this video at all, we would love if you could leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification down below so you never miss an upload and we'll see you in the next one.